You may have this rare body feature already and not know about it since sometimes even an x-ray can't spot it. Most of us have 12 pairs of rib bones, which means we were born with 24 ribs. There are some folks, though, that actually have 25 ribs. Only 1 in 200 people have this rare extra feature, and it's called a cervical rib. It generally appears above the first rib, right at the base of the neck and above the collarbone. It's nothing to worry about, though. Most of the time, they're unnoticeable, and if ever painful, they can be safely removed. Do you know how huskies can sometimes have their eyes in different colors? Some people come equipped with this rare feature, too. The medical term for it is heterochromia. The name comes from the ancient Greek word heteros, which translates to different, and chroma, which means color. People with this condition can either have complete, central, or partial heterochromia. The complete type means that the person has two completely different colored eyes, say, one brown and one green. Two different colors in the same eye are what specialists call central heterochromia. A person with a partial heterochromia has just a portion of their eye of a different color. You can either be born with this condition or get it, say, after an injury. Still, it's extremely rare. Less than 200,000 people are diagnosed with it in the US. Either way, let's face it, it does look pretty cool. Speaking of eye color, want to try guessing what the rarest one is? I'll spare you the Google search. It's gray. Blue eyes may have been your first thought, and they are indeed already pretty rare. Only around 8 to 17% of the world's population have this eye color. When it comes to gray eyes, though, they're even more special. Less than 1% of people have them. This rare body feature is caused by a lower level of melanin in the eye's layers. If you're interested in meeting someone with gray eyes, your best chance is in Eastern and Northern Europe. Even rarer eye colors are red or violet, but these can sometimes be the result of different health conditions. There are people out there who have the superpower of seeing 100 million different colors without the help of any fancy gadgets. We see colors thanks to some cells in our eyes named cones. Most of us have three types of cones to help translate what we see into the colors that our brain is able to understand. However, specialists think that there's a small group of people called tetrachromats who have four types of these cones. So far, researchers have only been able to identify women with this condition. That little teardrop-shaped ball hanging in the back of your neck, you know, the one that helps with swallowing your food, is called a uvula. The name comes from Latin and translates to little grape. Surprisingly enough, around 2% of people are born with a bifid uvula, which means that this indispensable organ in them is either split or forked. You sure can surprise others with this cool feature of yours at parties. Joking aside though, people with this bifid uvula may sometimes have trouble eating, drinking, and speaking. They might also have issues with digesting food. Their speech may also sound a bit unusual, but this depends on how much the uvula is split. This particular body feature might not be the perfect trait when going on vacation, but it does allow people to do more with less sleep. They say that famous people like Nikola Tesla, Margaret Thatcher, and Winston Churchill had this super rare feature. This gene, called the DEC2 gene, helps with regulating our circadian rhythms. Those are the natural biological clocks that let us know when we should be sleeping or eating by making us sleepy or hungry. A person with this rare mutation can basically go through a normal sleep cycle in less time. They can feel rested even if they slept for only 4 to 5 hours. That's one superpower I definitely want to have. How about a gene mutation that gives you superhero-like bones? They're basically unbreakable. It also makes your skin less prone to aging. Yep, looks like with this feature, you can walk away from accidents unharmed and even withstand the flow of time. Some other people out there come with a very attractive feature, but it can go unnoticed, at least at first glance. They have a little something called distichiasis, which basically means an extra row of eyelashes. Just in case you're wondering about the medical aspects too, it results from a genetic mutation of a certain gene. 
As beautiful as it may sound, people with that extra eyelash layer can experience some pretty unpleasant sensations in their eyes and, in some cases, even have problems with their vision. If spun glass hair doesn't ring a bell, know that it is, in fact, a condition you might have. I know it's pretty self-explanatory, but just FYI, it causes frizzy and dry hair. It's basically so unmanageable that you literally can't comb it. It also tends to grow out from the scalp in all directions. As for coloring, it comes in either bright blonde or silver. Most of us have hair strands that are cylindrical. People with this condition have triangular or heart-shaped strands or even flat altogether. It's extremely rare with only 100 confirmed cases, but it does become more manageable with age. Hey, not to freak you out or anything, but every second, your body creates 25 million new cells. I'll do the math for you. That means that in about 15 seconds, you'll have produced more cells than there are people in the United States. Think about that next time you feel you haven't been productive enough. It may account for only 2% of our body mass, but our brains actually take up 20% of our blood supply and oxygen. Our brains can also produce enough energy to supply a light bulb. That is, when we're awake. Ever thought about what the largest human organ is? It's your skin, and it's thickest on the palms of your hands and soles of your feet. I know, I know, I hate dusting too. But you are particularly responsible for that layer of fluff on your TV screen, you know. Every human being sheds about 600,000 particles of skin every hour. And most of the dust around your house is actually composed of that. So yes, we're all rather flaky. These days, it's considered more of a beauty mark. But the reason why people are born with a Cupid's bow is actually quite intriguing. As our features start to develop before we're even born, it appears that the Cupid's bow is actually the place where our face, well, zips up. The right side of the face and the left side of the face, that is. While in humans, it may not be that obvious. If you look at your dog's nose, you'll see it has a straight vertical line just under the nostrils. That's right, dogs have this zip too. Did you know you were born with more bones than you have today? At birth, we have somewhere around 300 bones. But as we age, some of them fuse together. That's why in adulthood, we end up having about 200 bones. Although your teeth are technically part of your skeletal system, they're not actually bones. They do look sort of similar and do share some characteristics, like being the hardest elements in your body. Why the misconception, though? Well, it's mostly because both teeth and bones contain calcium. To be a bit more specific, about 99% of the body's calcium is in your bones and teeth. The remaining calcium is in your bloodstream. So what makes them different, you might ask? It's in how the bones and teeth heal and how you should take care of them. While bones can repair and heal themselves, your teeth aren't able to do that. That's why we have dentists. We don't only have unique fingerprints, our tongues are one of a kind as well. Research has shown that those approximately 10,000 taste buds on our tongues are laid out in a unique pattern, specific for each one of us. About 80% of what you believe is taste is actually smell. The combination of taste and smell that we perceive is what we come to know as flavor. It's probably because our sense of smell is around 10,000 times stronger than our sense of taste. So, the next time you're tuning in your favorite song, try to pay some attention to your heartbeat. Do you hear that? Yep, that's right. While listening to some music, your heartbeat will sync with the rhythm of the song. And speaking of that healthy ticker of yours, just in case you're wondering, it beats on average about 75 times per minute. This means that in any given year, a human heart can pump enough blood to fill an Olympic-sized pool. What's even more fascinating is that if you were to connect all your blood vessels end-to-end, you'd be able to circle the Earth four times. But that would really hurt, so don't try that. We are the only species on this planet to have a chin. There's still some debate around this subject in the scientific community, but one of the reasons seems to be to make our jaws stronger. As humans have continued to evolve, their teeth and the muscles in their jaws got smaller and smaller. So they needed something to help with increased jaw resistance. That transparent part of your eye is called the cornea, and it helps the light go through. It's also the only part of your body that isn't connected to any blood supply. Why? 
because it's especially designed to get its oxygen straight from the surrounding atmosphere. If you took out all the fat found in a healthy human body, it would be enough to make 7 bars of soap. We also produce enough saliva in our lifetimes to fill two swimming pools. Great expectorations! Ever wondered how much we actually eat during our whole lifetimes? I'll spare you the math. An average-sized person eats nearly 66,000 pounds of food throughout the whole course of their lifetime. How much is that for scale? About 6 elephants. And that ain't peanuts. Each of us carries around 4 pounds of bacteria on average at any given time in our bodies. But hey, don't go running to the doctor just yet. Most of that bacteria is actually good and have specific functions in the human body. Now, nobody really knows why we need the appendix, but it's always at the back of the book. Wait, wrong appendix. Some researchers claim the human appendix helped our ancestors process the tree bark and whatever they were eating at that time. As we have a way more balanced diet now, the appendix can disappear from our bodies without any consequences. Another purposeless thing in our bodies is the wisdom teeth. Yeah, they used to come in handy when dentists didn't exist, but now we can ideally make do without them. Your brain will grow by roughly 2% if you venture into space. Under normal gravity, it's thought that fluid in the brain naturally moves downwards when we stand upright. But there is evidence that microgravity prevents this, resulting in fluid accumulation in the brain and skull. When you age, your brain is gradually reducing in size. By age 75, it's much smaller than at age 30, and it starts shrinking at 40. It happens to everyone, so you just have to go with it and keep your brain busy and nimble. If you stare into your eyes in the mirror, you'll see a small pink circle settled in the corner of your eye. This is your third eyelid. Useless for us, but valuable for animals, like birds, to keep dust and scattered debris from getting into their eyes. This might sound familiar to you if you've heard of natural selection. In short, natural selection keeps body parts throughout generations, but some of them are harmful, so they're phased out in the next generation and others that aren't staying, just like the third eyelid. Not only your brain shrinks as you get older, you too shrink dramatically. The bones get more brittle, the backbone gets compressed. It works vice versa too. When you rest at night, your bones kind of relax too, so you wake up taller than when you went to bed last night. Our ears help us keep the balance, so hearing isn't their only duty. Our vestibular system occupies the inner ear. Canals in your inner ear contain fluid and tiny sensors that look somewhat like hairs, helping you keep your balance. As for hairs, only a few body parts aren't covered with them. These are palms, the soles of the feet, and lips. Hairs grow even in the belly button. Their purpose is to catch lint. Mine does a great job. And not only lint, our belly buttons have an entire animal encyclopedia in them, with a range of about 70 different bacteria. Some of them can also be found in soil in Japan, and even some bacteria typical for polar ice caps. See? You have a whole naval expedition going on and didn't even know it. Only about 43% of you is you. You're over 50% tiny little creatures that mainly live in your gut and other body parts without ever leaving it. Still, even though your cells are fewer than microbial ones, there are, on average, about 100 trillion of them in you. With this in mind, your genes are less than half of what you consist of. If you take all the microbes dwelling within your body and count their genes, it'll be anywhere from 2 to 20 million genes and their combinations. If you sleep, and I recommend that you do, it doesn't mean all of your body sleeps. In fact, sometimes your brain has to work even harder when you're asleep. It needs to process tons of information, and reports usually take time. One thing that indeed rests while you're sleeping is your nose. You won't smell anything nasty in your sleep. The thing is that your sense of smell deactivates at night. If there's some terrible smell in your bedroom, you won't even be bothered. Scientists used to believe we could distinguish around 10,000 smells. Nope. Recent research showed that people could indicate more than a trillion smells. We also remember them better than anything else, and odors can even evoke some distant memories. Meanwhile, our strongest and most emotional memories are usually fake. It's the way the central memory works, 
It gives us the confidence to believe everything we remember is real, even though we should be confident about fewer details. Now, you don't mind if I call you a mammal, do you? Well, among us mammals, only humans can always walk on two hind limbs and keep that posture for their entire lives. You may want to say that kangaroos or gorillas move in the same way, but kangaroos use their tail as a third leg, and gorillas use the help of their long arms to keep balance. Your bones take part in metabolism, too. Since they mainly consist of calcium, when there's not enough of this element in your blood, bones start shedding it into the bloodstream, balancing your body. And vice versa, when there's too much calcium in your blood, it goes into the bones to be stored for later. Our height, shape of our body, and skin color depend a lot on where our ancestors used to live. But we can adapt to new conditions even within our lifespan. For example, if you move from the plains to the mountains, you'll eventually develop more red blood cells to compensate for the lack of oxygen. And naturally, if you drive from a colder climate to a hotter and sunnier one, your skin will change pigmentation slightly to adapt. Our lifespan is programmed within our cells. They constantly renew and divide, but they have a sort of internal timer that stops at some point. Some cells also stop reproducing sooner than others. On average, cells cease dividing when we reach the age of 100. If we find a way to trick ourselves into turning off the timer, we could potentially live forever. But we'd be a huge mass of wrinkles by then. <laughs> Body fat acts as insulation material energy reserve, and shock absorber. Your body sends the most fat into your waist region because that's where your internal organs are. If something happens to you, this layer of fat might as well protect those organs from serious damage. Your skull isn't a single bone. It consists of 22 different bones, many of which are fused to protect your brain. The mandible, or the lower jaw, is the only skull bone that's only attached to your head with connective tissues and muscles. This is what makes it so mobile. You can move it in any direction you like. And the smallest bone in your whole body is inside your ear. It's called the stapes, and it's no larger than a grain of rice. Now, if you were asked where your stomach was, you'd probably point to your tummy. Sorry, but that's wrong. It's actually up here, hidden behind your ribs. Your stomach has a pretty incredible capacity, being able to hold up to a half a gallon of liquids. That's a whole large bottle of Coke. It's pretty hard to estimate how much hard food you can eat because it's processed with your teeth before it ever gets to your stomach. There's definitely not enough room for a turkey, but a good-sized chicken would probably fit it in. Speaking of organs, scientists believe that the appendix will disappear eventually. Nobody really knows why we need it, but some researchers claim it might have existed to help our ancestors digest tree bark. Because it's no longer a part of our daily diet, the appendix isn't necessary and can disappear from our bodies without any consequences. Now, the appendix isn't the only obsolete part of our body. Wisdom teeth aren't that useful either. Yeah, they used to come in handy when our ancestors lost some of their teeth. But the only thing they help us lose now is the money we spend extracting them. In fact, you can easily survive without your appendix, stomach, one kidney, or one lung. <laughs> nice to know we have spare parts. If you never knew you had a personal bodyguard, look deeper. Your liver is your security guard, protecting you from toxins and many other things you don't want to have. It's also pretty indestructible and can even regenerate. Your liver is a very important organ that works a lot and is responsible for 500 individual functions. Up to 10% of it is made of fat. The liver can grow back. Yep, even if you only have half of your liver left, it can still regenerate to its original size. Now, on average, the heart is as big as your fist. It beats 115,000 times and pumps around 2,000 gallons of blood each day. The right lung is bigger than the left one because your body needs to make some room for the heart. You inhale a lot of different types of debris including 7,000 of your very own skin flakes, and that's only in a day. The stomach is the most important defender of the immune system. Hydrochloric acid in our stomach kills dangerous food toxins, viruses, and bacteria that get in there with the food you eat. This acid can digest even the stomach itself, but the mucous membrane protects it. You can burn calories when you take a hot bath, 
as many as you would if you took a half-hour walk. You burn somewhere between 100 and 200 calories per hour while standing. Sitting burns 60 to 130, depending on your height, weight, gender, and age. Now, your own body makes mosquito bites swell and itch. A mosquito breaks your skin. Your immune system perceives the insect saliva as a foreign substance, so it starts a special reaction to flush the intruder out of your body. A compound produced by the immune system, called histamine, makes the blood flow faster around the bitten area, and it causes swelling. The histamine also sends a signal to the nearest nerves, which makes the bite itch. Meanwhile, the food on the plane is likely to taste different than on the ground. That's because you lose up to 30% of your taste bud sensitivity due to the dryness and pressure in the cabin. It's especially true about salty and sweet foods. Now, you wouldn't be able to taste food without saliva. Your taste buds have chemoreceptors that recognize different flavors, but they need some liquid for those flavors to bind into their molecules. Also, you can't taste things saliva doesn't dissolve. You can always squeeze in some dessert, no matter how much salad, soup, or meat you've eaten before. Your body gets bored of savory tastes, but when you see and smell something sweet, like ice cream, cakes, or chocolate, your brain gets excited. It overrides all fullness signals for pleasure. Plus, your stomach is a flexible organ, and sugar helps it relax and physically make room for dessert. Hey, I rely on that information. The tongue is one of the strongest muscles in your body. This organ contains more than 10,000 taste buds, and each bud is filled with microscopic hairs. Their job is to sense your food, distinguish tastes, and send information to your brain to initiate the appropriate digestion process. During your life, all those tiny bumps and ridges on your tongue create a special individual pattern. That's why experts say that tongue prints are as unique as fingerprints. Your tongue doesn't have separate bitter, sweet, sour, or salty sections for tasting. Each of the 8,000 taste buds you have on the tongue, the roof of the mouth, and even in the throat can detect all the tastes. For some people, cilantro may taste similar to soap because the plant contains a chemical used in soap making. But only 4 to 14% of the world's population have special genes that can detect it. The masseter is the strongest muscle you have based on its weight. Together with the rest of the jaw muscles, it can close your teeth with a force of 200 pounds on the molars and 55 pounds on the incisors. Your spine has a great memory. It remembers your posture, making it so difficult to change it for the better. You owe goosebumps to your ancestors from many, many, many years ago. Their hair used to stand up to make them look bigger and scarier to foes. Cats hiss and arch their backs for the same reason. Only about 43% of you is actually you. Over 50% of the cells in your body belong to tiny little creatures that mainly live in your gut. Still, even though your own cells are fewer than the microbial ones, there are, on average, about 100 trillion of them in you. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.